So I've got a project coming up where I wanted an LCD display controlled by Arduino. Um, and I've used these displays before and you know they're, they're pretty straightforward to use, pretty, pretty standard. Um, and so I got this one off eBay and I paid £1.57 uh, delivered which is just incredible. And we look at it and it's, you know, the quality of the board is very, very good. It's got the gold flashing on all the all the contacts there. Um, the soldering all looks good. Um, everything hunky-dory. But I couldn't get it to work. And I, you know, I'm just puzzled by that because, as I say, I've used them before. Um, and I thought, well, there's something wrong with this actual board. And so I contacted the seller. And, you know, experience on eBay with... Uh, uh, looking for support is a bit variable but I have to say in this case it was absolutely outstanding um, the seller came back and he pointed me to the data sheet and he was making sure that I was you know everything was connected up properly and then he, he just offered to send me three replacement parts just so that I could uh, uh, you know had enough material to work with really um, so he did that arrived next day and so I, I took one of these new ones out and I had the same problem, couldn't get it to go. Um, curious effects uh, on the display. So anyway, let's go and have a look at what I found. And you can see it here, this is it set up and, and it's kind of just rippling through the, the display there very slowly and there's no characters. And at one point I could actually, it, it moved a little faster and I could kind of see the characters behind this. So it, it was trying, but just not making it. Um, and so there's obviously there's obviously some clock in here that uh, deals with this, uh, the speed of everything that's going on. And you wonder if there's something wrong there. And then if we look at the, the back of the board, we've got a little table here. And it tells us what some of the resistors do and one of them here is R6 and it says that's the oscillator resistor and that makes perfect sense, makes perfect sense we've got some oscillator driving this device in here and this is R6 here so a question if that's doing its job right um, or what's going on there and clearly if we change that resistor we're ex going to expect to see something, uh, some change in frequency and the first obvious thing to do is just to put our finger across it and that's going to, it's going to change the resistance very slightly and we'll see if there's any change to the change to the pattern so that's what I did and let's just do it here again and if I put my, you can see I'm just almost touching it there and it comes up good get a proper display and take my finger away and it fades away again and if I wet my finger and just put it over there, you have a very solid display and again it will fade away after a little while um, there we go, it's just fading away there so that tells me that that clock's just not running right there's nothing wrong with the module itself but it's been clocked incorrectly um, and so let's uh, have a look at that, we'll measure the, what that resistor is and uh, see what we think's going on there so measuring the the resistor, what we see is it's reading about a meg ohm there, uh, 0 0.8, 0 0.9 of a meg ohm, which seems very high for a, a clock uh, resistor. Um, so, again, and, and we know if we put our finger across that, and if we even if we wet our finger and just put some moisture across it, it seems to work just fine. So next thing is what what is the if I wet my finger what's the resistance um between the two two close points and there we are we're a couple of hundred K so significantly less than the one meg. Uh, let's try again and if we go very close oh, yeah 150 200 K so Maybe we need to reduce that resistor to some, uh, you know, 100k, 200k and see what that does for our display. And, you know, this is the second board that, that has had the same effect. So, 
Um, seems like they're all doing the same thing kind of thing. Um, so let's think about changing that resistor and uh, see what effect it has. So I mentioned that I was actually sent three replacement parts, which is really uh, excellent customer service, I think. Um, and uh, But when the second part, when I tried the second part and it, and it had the same issues, then I was thinking it was just something I was doing uh, that was the cause of the problem. But before, before I go and jump in and change any resistors here, I thought it was a good idea to actually go and measure the, the two remaining units and just see what they read. And uh, so we go in there, measure R6, and lo and behold, it's reading 91K. Uh, and if I read the, the other one, 91K. So that kind of ties in with what we were discovering about the... Uh, that resistor being too high and us putting our, you know, reducing it by just putting our finger across it. If I go back to this board, it's reading reading over a meg there. So this is obviously the issue. Uh, it just so happens the first two boards that I tried had this, uh, some problem with that resistor. And if I tried one of these boards, um, they would have been just fine. In actual fact, when I look uh, closely at the boards, one of them uh, is the, the resistor. It's got some markings on it. Uh, and then the markings are 913, which is 91k, uh, exactly what we're reading there, given, you know, with the tolerance. Um, so that's another another uh, confirmation that there's something very wrong with these uh, first two boards. And there's only one of the boards got the resistor marked, but it uh, just all adds up now. So let's now, uh, I'm just going to go and try and find a 100k resistor and we'll replace the resistor in this module here and uh, see how it behaves. So before we go and change the resistor I thought it would be worthwhile having a wee look on the scope at the clock. And so probing R6 there you can see I'm, I'm even I'm lower than 100 hertz there, I'm about 80, 80 odd hertz. Uh, and uh, now that clock, that clock 70 odd hertz, that clock is going to be divided inside the logic device here for all sorts of functions. And so starting with a reference of 100 odd hertz or we're near 50 there, um, it's just too slow. Um, and so that's obviously you know, you know, another clue this is a problem. So let's just wet that resistor again, put some moisture across it and uh, reduce its resistance. And if we probe then, you know, I've gone, you know, the scope uh, you can see that it went really high and then uh, it's dropping down back to the 100. Let's try again. See if we can measure the highest frequency. So we're over 200 kilohertz there and, and dropping. So that's the issue. So let's go and change that resistor and see uh, what that does for us. So resistor's changed then. Let's just have a quick look at the clock. And there we've got a stable, very stable, sort of 190 kilohertz. So much better than before. So turning the display over then, uh, you can see it's just working just fine as, as we would expect. Uh, so that's been our problem. And uh, if you've got one of these displays and you, you see this kind of rippling effect and uh, not getting the proper proper thing on the screen, then uh, maybe worth having a look at R6, that could be your, your problem. So at the start of this video I had the 8-bit uh, connection to the display. Um, and, you know, During my sort of searching as to what was going on, I wondered if it uh, actually needed the 8-bit uh, uh, data to actually make it work. So I connected that up and I still had the problem, so uh, I wasn't sure if it needed the 8-bits or not. Uh, but now we're at the end of this investigation and I've, I've removed the lower four bits uh, and it's working just fine. So, the, you know, the connection configuration in this display is absolutely standard and no issues whatsoever. Um, and that's as good to go now. The display is working quite happily.